back to The Past is Alive. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're all having a good weekend. Tonight we are back with another episode of The Weekend Recap, which is my favorite series to do here on the channel. Basically, I highlight all the things I've picked up every weekend. And over the last two days, I found some pretty awesome stuff, as you can see here. Some interesting things as well. Found some uh, vintage toys and also some older baseball cards. Two of my favorite things right there. So, had some pretty good luck. But we're going to take some time now and check out everything that I got. We're going to rip some packs. I have a clip from an auction we went to today to show you. Uh, some stuff I try to get there. So, stay tuned and check it out. This place is advertising uh, a lot of sports memorabilia, older vintage stuff, cards from the 60s and 70s, autographs, all kinds of stuff of that nature. But they're also advertising vintage toys from the 90s, primarily. And it had uh, a lot of Power Rangers stuff there, which is the main reason why I wanted to go. Uh, all new in box. Uh, I knew that they had a Megazord there and some other things as well, some Batman stuff. So I wanted to go out and take a shot at trying to scoop some of this stuff. but big issue there was that there was also a lot of competition there. Uh, right off the bat, they started out basically with a 15-inch Batman figure from the animated series, and there was a guy basically that paid full price, full eBay price for it, so I kind of knew right off the bat that it was going to be kind of tough to score any of this stuff for a relatively good price, so didn't have a whole lot of hope after that. I saw a couple other uh, people there that were uh, interested in the toys and whatnot, so we stuck around for about two hours. And I, don't, I think they auctioned off maybe one sports memorabilia piece in two hours. So Eric, got, Eric and I got kind of tired of it, and we ended up bailing and going to an antique mall. But we found some good stuff, so it ended up working out. So, you know, sometimes you don't make out that great going to auctions. You expect more than you should. But, you know, they're still fun to go to and check and see if you can get uh, stuff for decent prices. But anyways, let's, uh, let's start out. I'll show you what I got yesterday. Eric and I went out to a card show about an hour and a half away. And... Didn't have a whole lot of luck there. It was probably only like eight tables. I think we both left empty-handed, didn't buy anything at all whatsoever. Just couldn't find anything for any good deals or there wasn't really much there to begin with. So um, we ended up stopping at a hobby shop um, on the way back. And this place always has like a rookie box for a few bucks a piece. They also have good vintage rookies for, for a decent price. I think they had like a uh, Henderson rookie and Dave Winfield and... 25 bucks and stuff like that so nothing too crazy but you know some decent deals here and there but went to the rookie box and I managed to find one card that I needed a Tim Lincecum 2007 Topps traded rookie card for two bucks which I thought was a good deal book value is five but you guys might remember from my weekend recap last weekend I was trying to find his 2007 upper deck uh, rookie card in uh, a couple packs that I bought from a local uh, sporting goods store and didn't uh you know, I fell short, didn't find it. So I was pretty excited to find that, didn't have that card. So I, I added that to my personal collection there for two bucks, which I thought was a great deal. And then afterwards, we stopped at a Goodwill, which Goodwill of all places, I never ever find anything in there as far as toys go. Maybe like a loose figure here and there, but I feel like Goodwill was, you know, so watered down basically from everyone going in there and you know thrifting buying stuff and putting on ebay and you know i can't stand it it sucks i usually don't even stop at goodwills anymore but this goodwill is incredible they had so much stuff there and everything in the store was 50 percent off for some reason not really sure why but i was so excited when I, when I saw the toy section because it was it was like two full shelf rows of toys and um managed to find a 1993 Muddy Max Dragon Island uh, playset here, which I never owned one of these. I was super excited when I saw this, and it's not complete, but three dollar price tag on this one. And as you can see there, it takes two AA batteries, which we're gonna test this thing out in a second. I haven't messed with it at all, but the place that actually opens up, so you see it opens up in the front there, and this entire section open, up, up, opens up as well. It's not complete, but really awesome. So I was like, three bucks for that is a great deal. Even though it has no figures, I can go and buy those individually if I want to. But these two, um, these two lights, um, they light up with the batteries in it, and they emit a, a red light. So I'm gonna take a second here now. And these actually pop out too, which is pretty cool. You can see that. Pop out and retract. But, um, we're gonna see if this thing works. So let me grab some AA batteries. Let's check it out. All right, so I managed to find AA batteries. I'm getting worried there for a second. Missing a screw there, but.
but that can be replaced, so not a huge deal. Let's check out and see if this thing actually works. And it does. Pretty awesome. Was not hopeful at all if this would work coming from a Goodwill, but there you can see the red lighting. Pretty cool stuff. I'm not really sure how you get to turn it off. I don't know if there's a switch in here or how that works. But um, never owned this one as a kid, so pretty stoked to have my personal collection now. Definitely to keep this one. See if I can even uh, get the figures individually and um, you know have it on display. So pretty awesome. I'm excited about that pickup from Goodwill. And everything was 50% off, which I found out afterwards. So it's really like a dollar fifty. I want to say I got everything for less than four bucks. So pretty sick. And then the next thing I picked up at Goodwill, the same aisle is this awesome She-Ra playset from 1995. And this is Crystal Castle, which is pretty awesome. Obviously, it's Goodwill, so it is incomplete, missing some things, missing the throne, uh, the back piece there. But you guys might remember She-Ra from Masters of the Universe, where she was originally uh, introduced. And then they went on to, uh, Filmation went on to create their own series about her in 1985, so it still has the original string here, which is kind of cool. This still works. So you pull the string, and the elevator goes up and raises She-Ra out of the top of the castle there. But pretty awesome, and this was, I think, the sticker on this one is four bucks. So for Crystal Castle... And Dragon Isle and Mighty Max. I got these for both of these for like th under four bucks. They're like three seventy or something like that. So insane deal for these vintage toys. Like I said, I never find any Goodwill. Never happens. So I was blown away finding both of those. And then today, after leaving the auction, which I was a little bummed out about because I left there empty-handed, we, we Eric and I stopped at an antique mall that we usually frequent every few weekends or so, and he picked up some stuff. And I came across this amazing 91 Tops Wade Boggs Desert Shield card. And it was seven bucks. And uh, I've been intrigued by these for a few, quite a few years now. I've always wanted to own one. These are super hard to find. Very, very rare, especially to find a good condition. Um, so for seven bucks, these cards were only given out to members of the military during uh, Operation Desert Storm in 91. So... Uh, full sets of these, you know, a lot of cars are destroyed and never made it back. So to find one, one of these at all, especially for seven bucks, is pretty awesome. I know somebody sent Eric one a while back, so he has one as well, but I couldn't turn this down for seven bucks. And it's like really good condition too. Like I, I wouldn't be surprised if this uh, grayed out at a ten, like a nine or a ten. Uh, corners were all sharp on it. The centering is really good too. So I might even send this off to PSA. I want to say like a uh, PSA ten uh, bogs. I think they could sell for like 300 bucks uh, for Desert Shield cards. So um, obviously I'm going to keep this in my PC though. Really happy to finally come across one of those and uh, add it to my personal collection. So that was pretty sick. And then before the auction, we stopped at a uh, another flea market we frequent um, every couple months or so. But picked up this awesome 84 Tops wax box here. And now this one's kind of interesting though. So I talked to the guys for a couple minutes there. Weird story behind these, like see how this pack's like ripped a little bit. Um, some guy who doesn't deal in baseball cards brought these in, I guess like a week ago or whatever, and sold them to them. And this guy apparently has you know, no idea about baseball cards or anything else. He's brought them in, got rid of them. And I was like, what's the catch to these, these packs? Are they searched? As you can see, some are ripped open. He said, they're not searched, but somebody went in and took pieces of gum out. So, because there's gum in these cards and these packs. And, like, in this pack, there's gum in there. So, some of these packs have missing gum. These top two do. This one does. This one does. This one still has some shards in it. But it looks like, um, like this has gum. In it. This, this one has gum in it still. It looks like these ones weren't, like, tampered with at all whatsoever. Because the further down I looked, the more I was like, wow, these packs, like, other than the, the exception of probably like the top eight, the rest looks like they're pretty solid. And, um, I don't know. I mean, it's not really too hard to unwrap one of these, go through them, search, take the good cards out. But, uh, these look pretty sharp. So, like, all these still have gum in them. 
So if there was somebody, some kid or whatever else in the 80s or whatever it was, going through taking, pat, you know, taking sticks of gum out to eat it, he didn't take any of these ones out. So literally, they, I think that the top eight um, are missing sticks of gum, but everything else in here is like these are I mean, the, the package. I mean, the wrappers aren't like really wrinkled or anything. So. I don't know, I figured we'd do a live stream on this and rip these open, see if we can find a Mattingly in here or Daryl Strawberry Rookie Cards. But, yeah, like all these bottom packs still have gum. So it looks like, um, this one's ripped right here, but seven packs, it looks like, are missing gum and the rest all can, uh, uh, contain gum. So um, I'd like to do a fun rip on those. If you guys want to get involved in that, let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, I don't know if these are searched or not. I'm going by what he said. I don't know if a little kid took the gum out. I don't know if, you know, a collector did, you know, and searched the packs at the same time. I don't know why he wouldn't do all of them if that was the case. But I want to rip these open regardless. But if you guys want to be a part of it and actually, you know, buy spots in the break, given the circumstances, let me know. And um, we'll get that set up even tonight or tomorrow and do a live stream on it ASAP. I want to see if we can find that Mattingly. So the same guy had a bunch of older wax, which you know, a lot of collectors scoff at older packs and early '90s wax. But uh, if there's inserts to be found, I'm gonna buy them, especially when uh, they're five for a buck. So '92 Fleer Ultra Series Two, it's pretty much garbage, but you can find the you know some a couple all rookie cards like Kenny Lofton. Not a crazy amount of value to McCall Box, but there's also All Star, the All Star insert set, as well. We could find uh, some decent inserts in there, so that's why I bought these. But 20 cents a piece for some fun and to try to find some inserts. And then 92 Don Russ Series Two, 92 Don Russ, pretty crap set for the most part, especially Series Two. But maybe we'll find an Elite card. You never know. That's what I'm looking for, and also some Diamond Kings inserts. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear those open now and let's see if we can find an Elite or some inserts in these. Let's do these Fluid Ultra first. There's a lot of packs here, but I wanna save the uh, Dawn Rush for last. See if maybe we get an Elite card. Been searching for those for a while. These ones are always notorious for being bricks. So I'm not gonna really go through all these. I'm gonna just see if we have an insert any of these because Series 2 for this set is absolutely awful. I want to say the most valuable card is in the Almanac, it books at a quarter, and it's like a Chad Curtis rookie or something like that. But other than that, you can't even find a Bonds or a Ryan or anything in these uh, two Junior Ortiz. Wade Boggs, that's probably the best card right there, actually. But I'm sure the you know value of it is probably about a quarter. So you could probably still get some Hall of Famers like Lee Smith and whatnot, but... Guys like that never really actually get any value to their cards. So we're looking for inserts in these bricks. So I think we got like 18 packs. There's the Eric Kara's second year card. It's not a bad one either. Always like the Eric Kara's solid ball player. Let's see, these ones are. I'd like to do a whole box break of these, a case break of those. Eric Kara's second year card, but I thought that was Pudge Rodriguez for a second there. You gotta listen to that awful noise. And hope you don't have paper loss if you actually have a decent insert card. Try to get through this as quick as possible. As Eckert's Lee Hall of Famer. Get through as quick as possible so um, a video isn't super long. I had some technical issues with my computer recently. I lost my copy of Premiere Pro, so I can no longer edit on that. So now I'm editing an iMovie, which I like iMovie. It's real simplistic, but what I don't like about it is that when you edit movies, you have to have enough memory on your phone to be able to save it to your camera roll. And that's where things get difficult because you make a half hour video, you know, how many gigs that would be if it's you know, exported in 720, I never have enough room. So then I run into the problem of doing that. I won't say to my camera roll that I have to upload it to my computer and it's just a big pain. 
Deion Sanders. I didn't really care for 92 Fleur Ultra that much. I always like 93 better. 91 Ultra was pretty bad. The update set's decent, but the, the base set is pretty awful. There's really no good rookies in there. They're all in the update set. These are just painful to go through. Reggie Sanders, second year card. A 93, I feel like the 93 Fleur Ultra are so much easier to find inserts in those ones. So I ripped a few boxes of those and always, I'm, I think I'm gonna start cracking these and just crossing my fingers that there's no paper loss because most of these cards are very worthless. Noel Hershiser, it's a nice one. Nice one, but uh, really no value to his cards. But very good picture though in this time. Regardless of his value as cards. And we, there we go, we have a Tom Glavin. So Hall of Famer Tom Glavin All-Star uh, insert card there. Not a lot of value to it, it's probably books at like 75 cents, but still cool to find an insert. I think I have like five of that card already, so I wish it was somebody else. Let me know if you guys wanna do a case break on these. We wanna set some world records for longest case breaks. One of the world record is for longest case break. I think the, the one I did was like five hours and 49 minutes. There's uh, I'm sure there's probably one out there that uh, longer than that. That was exhausting. I'm gonna do a 10 box break here soon. Mixer break. I wanna do 92 Don Rust, looking for an elite card, but the seller that I was trying to buy it off of, very shady person, kind of backed out on me and stopped uh, answering my messages and stuff. So it doesn't seem like we're going to be able to do 92 Don Russ anymore, so I was pretty bummed out about it. I really want to do that and find an elite card. So now I guess we're going to go back to Gary Carter, Hall of Famer. Go back to the mixer break. Ten boxes. Some good stuff. 93 Flair. 91 Bowman. 90, 93 Top Series 1 with a Jeter. 97 Collector's Choice. So there's some good ones in there. How it's probably going to be done is we're probably going to be... I'm thinking about just selling 36 lots one pack per box and doing it that way and making them affordable so that everyone can participate everyone has the same chance of pulling the key rookies we're looking for and the ashby rookie oh these are just oh and we have another insert card here looks like it's Dion sanders so that's not a bad one there's better cards you can pull out of the uh insert set for all stars but still not a bad one never had that card so Oh my, this is tiresome, pulling these all apart. Phil Plantier, second year card, that probably had some value to it back in the day. Not sure how many of you would see 92 Fleur Ultra Packs. I'm on a scale, solid ball player. Would see 92 uh, Fleur Ultra Packs and buy them, like I said, for 20 cents. If it was like, I don't know, 91 Fleer for 20 cents, I wouldn't have bought them. Or 90 Fleer or 90 on Russ, I would skip those for 20 cents. But Fleer Ultra, like I said, always kept me entertained with insert cards. These ones are peeling a little easier. I mean, I spoke too soon. There's a lot, a lot of junk in these. I'm sure the guy knew it that was selling them. He had, he had a whole box full of um, junk wax cards for the most part. A lot of 90 upper deck, which not a terrible set. You got some good rookies in there, Larry Walker and Sosa. And some, you know, decently valuable error cards. But I have so many 90 upper deck cards, and I want to say I still have a, a wax box of those somewhere laying around here. You can usually buy those for about five bucks at flea market key spot. I mean, card shops sometimes have them, they're always at five bucks. So we pulled two inserts so far out of 
I don't know, less than 10 packs, I think. Something like that. Or right around there. Nails on a chalkboard. These freaking cards being pulled apart. I'm hoping we can actually pull um, a decent all-star card. Like I said, there's the uh, all-rookies too, but there's no one really that promising. All that work for Frank Castillo. Larry Walker. A lot of Larry Walker fans out there. Fortunately, that card probably is worth about 15 cents in the almanac. Chris Gwynn. I always liked how they had the rookie symbol up there, though. I always thought that was cool. Because in this time era, no cards did that. So that was kind of like revolutionary for the time period. Now, baseball cards nowadays all have the rookie card symbol on them. I remember back in the day, if you didn't have Beckett on you, and you're a little kid trying to figure out whose rookie was what. I was real young with Pat Listash. That was a hot name back in the day. Checklist. George Bell. Some crap in that pack. And we have left three, six, eight packs, so... Two inserts and ten packs so far. I think we'll get another one. I'm not sure what the odds are for. Um, there we go. There's ten card, blah, blah, blah. So, odds of finding an all star card are one in six and a half. And odds of finding an all rookie are one in 13. Well, we got 18 packs, so that means we should find one all rookie card. There's a Sosa. One of the better cards of the set, but still really no value to it. So, we should find one more All-Star insert card based on the odds. And we should find also a All-Rookie card. Hopefully it's like a Kenny Lofton because there's a lot of junky rookies that fizzled out pretty quickly and just had crap careers. Weren't around for too, too much longer than the 90s. So, hopefully pull somebody good. Lofton is the best one you can get. A lot of duds in that insert set, so Vaughn Calderon was murdered in the 90s. Brutally murdered a bar. So a lot of rookies in this series, but they uh, and here we go. That's very nice. A Hall of Famer, too. All-star card. Try to be careful pulling this one apart. Nice Barry Larkin. Very nice. Like that one a lot. So, three All Star cards out of here. Love pull insert cards. So, that alone is worth like the three bucks I paid for all these packs. Not bad. Not bad at all. Maybe we'll beat the odds. So, we're tapped out now on the All Star cards. A nice card shilling. And here's another one. Too bad it's a Tom Pagnozzi. I think I have that one too, but it's probably the worst one you can pull out of the uh, All-Star set. So, not bad for uh, for inserts. Fleur Ultra has never let me down, really. But anytime I buy a pack of those, I always end up getting a bunch of inserts like those. Even the 06 Ultra packs I ripped open last Sunday, those are like guaranteed insert per pack, but there's also some other subset cards in there that are pretty valuable. Frank Thomas. That was a nice one. Maybe we'll beat the odds here. Oh, actually, we already did beat the odds. We pulled four of them, but maybe we'll pull a fifth one. Still looking for an all rookie card. They look a lot like the all star cards. Under Wade Boggs here. So we're seeing some repeat cards now. Very, very nice. Another one, and it's Barry Bonds. Very nice. I want to say I bought this at a card show or an antique mall recently for like a dime. I think it books out at like five bucks or eight bucks, somewhere around there. I want to say maybe eight. But um, very, very nice. Probably the best card we can pull out of there. So five all-star insert cards. And we still have four packs left. So 14 packs and five insert cards. Very nice. Let me get the whole set out of these. 
So the Barry Bonds definitely made it all worth buying these packs to begin with. Like that car a lot. A lot of repeats here again. Be nice if we get a re and another one. Holy crap! With the inserts, a Daryl Strawberry. So these are supposed to be one every six and a half packs, and we've already gotten what five now or six? We got six now. Six All Star insert cards in what fourteen packs, I believe. Pretty crazy uh, luck there. Not a lot of value to the strawberry, but still love pulling the insert cards. Love the bonds. Very cool stuff. Maybe this luck will uh, continue on for the 92 Don Ross, and we'll find an elite card. I, I don't know what I'd do if I pulled the elite card out of a pack. I'd probably lose it. Some of you guys may know that Eric pulled an elite card out of a pack back in the 90s, a Fred McGriff Don Ross elite card. Pretty sure I was real jealous of him that day. I do own one that I bought at a flea market. I found a Cecil Fielder uh, for three bucks. I think it's ninety-one dollars elite. I was pretty stoked about that. I had to buy it. Kevin Brown. How about another insert card here? Oh, these freaking bricks! They're awful. Make you really work to see all the junk cards. Dave Winfield, and um, no insert in that pack. But we got two more left. And then we have five packs of 92 Don Russ. So maybe we'll get some Diamond Kings, and hopefully we pull an elite card. That'd be a cr what? Look at this. <laughs> it's all banged up. Mariana Duncan. Mariana Duncan got sacrificed, and we have another all-star insert card here at Gary Sheffield. Very nice. So that's seven all-star insert cards in 17 packs. That is pretty crazy. Completely against the odds on these. And there's another Sheffield. Huh, same pack. Weird. Almost like same photo, too. A little different, but very similar at the same time. Oh, these are brutal. Good thing those all-stars in the middle of the pack and didn't didn't get any damage at all whatsoever. My arms are tired from trying to support. Last pack. Maybe we get an all-rookie in here or another insert. I'm happy with the inserts. I like them. 20 cents a pack. I'll take them. Take my 90s inserts. I don't really like buying them uh, as singles. I like pulling a packs. That was my childhood, man, was uh, buying inserts and rookies and packs. So... You know, it's easy to go to a card show and go to a 10 cent box and buy inserts. I mean, I'll do it sometimes depending on uh, who it is and what set it is. But I'd much rather be, you know, have the surprise element and pull them out of a pack. Another Eric Harris second year card. Doesn't look like we're getting so lucky in the last pack, but not bad at all for, you know, less than four bucks to get all these all star insert cards. Barry Bonds being the best one. But. Uh, a couple of Hall of Famers in there too, so pretty awesome. Let's do the Don Russ. We got five packs here. These shouldn't be bricks. Never used to be, at least. Not glossy enough for that. But we're looking for insert, Will Clark, or an elite card. I got excited there for a second. I thought I saw. I, thought I saw a glimpse of something that was a not a base set card, but I was wrong. Nolan Ryan. That's a nice one off the bat. Probably the best card in this uh, series. Tom Glavin. And a Ripken. I don't remember ever having that card. I actually had this whole set, I want to say, in my parents' closet. So, nice Nolan Ryan there. And the Ray Rookie in the back. Fingers crossed for an insert card. Give me an Elite. So, three packs down.
Still hoping there's a jet bag well setting your card. Still hoping that 92 Don Russ case comes through when the guy's on vacation or something like that. But it's been a few days. Too many of you just ignore me now. I don't know why people uh, list things they don't want to sell them. Last pack. This one's we got an insert. Albert Bell, Mo Vaughn, Ozzy Smith All Star card. And I did not see an elite card or insert, but we tried. We still did good this weekend, though. Got a lot of awesome stuff and a lot of good cards. Um, I, I'm looking forward to the 84 tops, ripping those open. Um, these packs are pretty sick, though. But if you guys would like to buy these, I have pretty much most of these cards. I was looking to get some inserts I didn't have. If you guys want to buy all these cards, let me know in the comments. I'll sell them to you for what I paid for them, plus you pay shipping. And they are yours. But that is it for this weekend's recap video. Um, like I said, let me know also down below. Uh, if you want to buy into the 84 tops, if you think we should do a break on those, let me know real soon and um, we'll divide them up and the, the packs without gum or just uh, everything's falling over on my sloppy desk here. We will just um, divide the packs without gum up amongst, uh, you know, I think there's like seven or eight packs. Each person will get two of those and then all the rest, um, we'll, we'll do it by stack. So if you guys want to do that, um, let me know and... Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon.